so what disappointed was. So when I was thinking about you today, I was like, wow. I said, you know what? I love you, which means that I choose. This is the stance that I choose with you, regardless of what you may do or, you know, or what I may feel at that moment. Sometimes you just wake up in the morning. You don't feel love. You feel like crap. You know, you, you know, they call it what getting up on the wrong side of the bed. Sometimes you just feel like blah. But I still choose, my action is that I still choose to love you. I choose to love you regardless to what that temporary emotion, you know, is. You know, and, and I guess that's how you love God. You choose to love God. And how do you love God? Maybe you you uh, you obey him or maybe you seek him. Or if you, you love your neighbor, you choose, you choose the way that you're going to treat them regardless to the circumstances. Does that make sense? Because the circumstances change, but, you know, but does your approach change with the circumstances? You know what I'm saying? If if I got up tomorrow morning and you punched me in the face, that would cause me pain and some level of disappointment. But with that, with my approach, which is to love you, whatever that, you know, means change? No. So love is something that you do. Uh, it's an approach. What do you think about that? Yeah. It is. So how do you acquire it? <laughs> I mean, like the ability to do it. Because it, it, that's what I'm saying. It, it takes us our whole life to learn, basically, I think. I don't know. Well, I think a good transition to that. Well, I mean, I just mean, especially when you're talking about the spousal relationship, it's unfortunate that so many people get divorced within like two or three years or whatever the typical amount of time is because um, I don't know I mean like how can you completely know someone in two years or or learn to love them what I'm saying is like um it takes a really long time to really love someone. I don't especially love them the way they deserve. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favorite quotes is that I think goes goes with this conversation is Corinthians. And I know we hear it all the time. We hear this is one of those quotes that's so powerful. You hear it so many times, you almost become desensitized to it. It's almost like Martin Luther King. I mean, don't, I mean, and some people that hear that, but like, man, I can't believe he said that. But, like his message is so powerful and people talk about it so much that it kind of gets watered down and you get desensitized to it. So this this is one of those quotes. It's Corinthians 13, 4, 8, 4 through 8. You know what I'm talking about? Love is patient, love is kind. Yeah. So it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So I, I think it goes hand in hand because to me, love is a, is a methodology. It's, it's, a tr it's an approach. So regardless of the things that are temporal or the, the things that, are, that pass away, you still choose the love. And I think that that's the difference. That's why these relationships, and we're going in a whole different direction, which is good because it's a conversation. I think that's why the, those relationships cease to come to an end. Because when people say they love, they're so overwhelmed with emotion at that moment and they don't even know what it means. So they reach out for this big word called love and then in those times where you you experience difficulty and you don't feel that emotion about the person where they say, well, hey, you know, I'm no longer in love with you. I love you, but I'm no longer in love with you. And what is the end? Maybe the end is that that sweeping feeling of emotion that they were just caught up in in that moment. So then they, they go elsewhere and seek it elsewhere. And it's a perpetual journey and really are they seeking love or are they seeking this this emotion you know 
Because think, I mean, so let's put it somewhere else. We love our kids, right? But do do we do we also do we always get? Are we always caught up in this emotional feeling about our kids? I mean, I there have been times that my kids have disappointed me, and I'm just like, but I still love them. Again, I still chose my approach didn't change. You know, my ultimate approach, maybe the small details. Yeah. Or like when you get divorced, someone you don't just like. Well, these kids came with this marriage, therefore I don't want them anymore. Or so, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, a, you, I don't know. Yeah. Or, if, or you know, if, or if you, your child does something that you don't love, or you don't like, you still love them. You might not feel the same. I mean, every day you don't feel the same way as when you first hold your child in your hand and you look at them, and they, you know, I remember that feeling. You know, the emotion when a child comes into the world and. He finally comes out and he, he does the first cry and everybody's so emotional. I mean, that's love. I'm sure none of us feel that same exact emotion about our children every day. But we still love them. We choose, Love is something you do. What are you going to do? What do you choose to do? You choose to love them. It's an action. Like running or jumping. You choose to, you choose to do what it takes to support, to to protect, to engage, to care, to have an effect upon. It's a, it's a decision. So I tried to look for some different sources, of course. Again, it's, it's an interfaith conversation, so we don't always want to just draw from the Bible. You know, there's inspiration and things all over the place. I, think, I believe Jesus is a master, but I believe there were other masters because God is, you know, God has always been here. You know, so, you know, I, I don't believe that he just sent one messenger. I don't believe he just sent one message. Um, so I tried to find something in the Gita about love. Let's see. I found, let's see, what did I find here? And this, this is uh, considered to be Krishna's voice. And for those that have read the Gita, Krishna was, uh, was, uh, Accepted as the physical interpretation of God in this writing uh, that you know that came into form uh, in the form of Krishna to Arjuna, who was the the main character in that, and, and it says that it says, uh, "I am the same to all beings, and my love is ever the same. For those who worship me with devotion, they are in me, and I am in them." For even one who do, does evil were to worship me with all his soul, he must be considered righteous because of his righteous will. He will soon become pure and reach everlasting peace. For he, for be aware, Arjuna, that he love he who loves me, shall not perish. And and you gotta understand that the Gita was the, these are writings that that predated the uh, the Quran and predated the Bible, you know. And it sounds the verbiage is the same, you know, a lot as in Christian uh, writings, you know, it says, you know, he talks about those who love or worship him in devotion are in him and uh, and he and he is in them, you know, and in many ways, Jesus said things like that, that sort of confuse people, you know, you know, I am in the father, the, you know, I and the father are one and different things like that. And. You know, and people, you know, took it in different ways. Let me see what else did I find uh, from the Gita about love. What do you think about that? What do you think about uh, worshiping God and all self-devotion and him being in us and, and we being in him? Um, think about it. And then another part, another part in the Gita, he says, I am the self dwelling in the heart of all beings and the beginning, the middle and the end of all that lives as well. I think that's heavy. That's what, that's kind of what the experience that I get, you know, from each, from each book, I get a little something different. Like I love the teachings of, of the new Testament and, you know, and the wisdom that Jesus, you know, I think is irrefutable. Some of the stuff that he says, you know, but I also love a lot of the teachings from Proverbs, 
you know, I think the Proverbs, you know, the, the advice from Proverbs just seems more universal and acceptable. Even just like you said, it's like universal truths. You can read things in Proverbs, even if you weren't religious and be like, man, you know, that I get that, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, the Quran is deep in another way because it kind of, it kind of separates, you know, all the Jesus worship away from God and, and puts us back into perspective of who is most powerful and and that's what I get from the Quran. What I like from the uh, the Gita is it, it, it's more of a conversation of seems like more of an open conversation, you know, with God and and uh, and what He feels about us and you know. So that's that's one thing the advantage of not just sticking to one way of thought. I think, but um. What else does he say about love here? Let's see. What do you think while I'm uh, kind of thumbing through this? Um, I mean, what are we talking about the nature of God or are we talking about? Well, we the always talk about love. the nature of God, but, uh, you know, we always, you know, again, I love you. When, when somebody says, you know, what does it mean when, uh, when people talk about, talk about love and, and loving people. I mean, because it's kind of interesting because even the most despicable criminals or um, whatever they're called, you know, people who kill serial killers, you know, they even claim to love things and understand this emotion called love, right? Right. right. And um, it isn't ultimately that hard or that developed to just love the things that concern you and yourself. You know, um, I don't know how many psychopaths have, <laughs> you know, uh, healthy long-term relationships for most of their lives. You know, I don't know what the statistics on that are, but, um, cause that's, it, it's obviously more complex. I mean, you know, life kind of, goes in stages, I think, you know, when you first learn to, um, you know, love, somehow have love for our parents, you know, and then that kind of tapers off as we have these perceived love-like relationships with our peers and um, eventually, you know, find, and most people do find some sort of love interest early, you know, pretty early on in their life. You know what I'm saying? Like more, more young people do it than the old people, right? Find love relationships. Um, and while it is really <clears throat> complex and, you know, how to love a person over a lifetime, you know, um, even that is not is hard to compliment, contemplate, <laughs> at least for me, um, loving people, for example, that you don't necessarily like, or loving people that you <sighs> disagree with, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, 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 what is what does scriptures say about? Uh, God's love of man. You know, what do we have to do to elicit God's uh, love for us? And so, again, you well, know. Well, I think that, that, that is where all of the different belief systems tend to diverge. We can all agree on the essential and loving nature of God. If you believe in God, ultimately, and you're some sort of religious, not religious, you know, spiritual minded, you believe God is good. You don't believe God is evil, right? And ultimately, what is good, something that's good, you know, we can all pretty much agree on that it includes love or is love, you know? That that is the ultimate good. Well, to, to keep the conversation going into, you know, I, I wanted to go to the Quran and talk about God's love for man and, and um, couple things it says God loves those who do good like I'll give you uh, the Quran second verse 100 uh, uh, second 